So right, let me just go back to the go back to the last uh, few slides of the of the say, previous day. So I think the course content, right? I mean somehow okay, there is a slide on that. It doesn't seem to come up, but you people know what it is. So I'll just start from there. Okay. So so the way so the way right we are going to go about uh, go about right, doing it is to give you a quick review of deep learning, which we'll start today, uh, wherein we will start with uh, you know MLP. Okay. Uh, to to start with. There will be some overlap for those who, who have done a DL course uh, on imaging or who are doing, okay. There will be some amount of overlap, but then hopefully, right, once we are through with this deep learning, after that you won't have any overlap at all. I mean, then the, so then the contents to follow are very different. But, uh, but because, uh, you know, deep learning, this is a modern vision course, so deep learning has to be introduced. So, right, I mean, there are very few of you, okay, so I am not so worried. So, only those, for, I mean, for those of you who have already done all of this, just a revision. That's all, okay. But anyway, this will be a quick thing. I mean, not the very detailed way, right, in which we normally do a deep learning course, okay. And then after that, we go to CNNs, which again, right, you must have heard about. I mean, mainly, you know, these are used for uh, used for actually images. And uh, then, then, uh, then eventually, just these three topics, right. I mean, not not exhaustive, okay. So, so this RNNs, right, which again, which again is something that is interesting, especially if you're dealing with videos and so on, okay. So, uh, then the next thing, right, is. Uh, uh, then the next is uh, uh, so so the way we structure the course uh, is that right so we do a do a quick review of deep learning then followed by low level vision so low level vision right if you see okay what we would like to see is you know how do you sort of extract edges and so on this again you know this is a traditional way of uh, way of doing things and these days there are also modern ways of doing it there's something called an edge net and all right so there are also deep network ways of doing it but uh, we'll also study how these things are right, typically used to be done and uh, you know what kind of uh, what kind of right, uh, you know theory was there right in those days that helped you understand what edges are and so on so the edge extraction is one part and you know it's very important right, because based upon edges also you can you can you can say so many things right i mean you might wonder i mean what what do we do with edges but the fact is that you know even cartoons and all you don't have shading you don't have any shading information somebody just tries or draws a draws an edge sketch right and then you are able to make out who they are so typically of course you know it's for famous people right not like we can identify everybody from that but we know that there is so much information that lies in edges and there are also other kind of uses of edges especially from a vision perspective right which we will which we will see later and then uh, then you have feature extraction which is again something like if you wanted to build a, like we said last time right a triangulation when we talked about triangulation we said in a stereo you'll have two images and then a scene point right will create an image on the left and then it'll have an image on the right and you have to establish a correspondence right you have to know that this scene point is that in the other image in order to do that you have to have something that helps you tell that right visually you might be able to say but then uh, for an algorithm to be able to do it it should be able to find out something some features right that it's able to match right first of all it has to uh, right it has to arrive at what it what it thinks are robust features right that's why you have we have different different kinds of features right there's not just one type of feature out there there is i mean the most common is probably sift which you must have heard about scale invariant feature transform that's the most common used to be right but even today people use it it's not like these things have uh, you know are completely you know out of the picture or something just that they were they were quite I mean, they were rampantly used, right, at one point of time, and now I think you know people are looking at deep network-based features, you know, which the network itself figures out as to what is what is an appropriate feature for a particular task and so on. But but like I said last time, you can still have you know physics-injected stuff, right, in the sense that you can also bring these things inside your network if you wish to, right, depending upon how it helps helps your cause, right. There's no, and in most of these things, there are no straight answers, okay. You have to really try it out. I mean, nobody will be able to tell you that, hey, you do this, right? You're going to, right? That is the going to fetch you results. So, this deep learning is like that, right? I mean, it's also an art, right? really kind of more an art. I mean, right? you may know the problem, you may know what you want, but then, you know, it may, may take a while for you to figure out how to actually make that happen, right? And that comes only by practice. So, this feature extraction is like that, right? So, you, so you need to be able to not only, uh, you know, uh, do a detection, what is called a, a detect and uh, match. Right. So, uh, detect features in an image and then match it in the other image, right. So, similarly, so it is like saying the left image you have a bunch of features, in the right image you have a bunch of features, but now you have to match them. Because only after matching you can do the triangulation if that is the thing of interest. You can also do it for stitching images and all that. Right? You must have seen mosaicing, right, where people, uh, you know, create a panorama. So, there again, right, you have to, before you do the panorama, you have to sort of align the images, right. You can't just put them, you can't slap one on top of the other just like that, right. You have to align. Again, okay, you need those features to be able to align. So, these features are very important, right. They can give you 3D information, they can give you, you know, 2D transformations depending upon 
what you are looking at right. And uh, then this uh, line detection right this again this again is something right which we will talk about vanishing points and you know, vanishing lines and so on. Then blob detection more, more mostly to do with circular kinds of things right that you want to probably say detect and again right when, when what will be useful we will show, show some examples right when what can be useful and so on. And filtering in those days right it used to be a Gebauer kind of filters and uh, you know, simple filters right that would give you orientation information and so on. And now of course you know people more or less talk in terms of uh, even now it is well known that uh, even in a CNN and all right the initial layers actually learn orientations and so on I mean that is well established. So these edges are like edges are like you know low level features right so it could come directly by using any of the standard techniques but these days we do not do that so much. So what we do is we let a deep network figure out and it turns out that what it figures out is simple something similar to what what our own our own visual system also does in the sense that we also have at a very very preliminary level right we actually extract to see edge information we are very sensitive to edges by the way and uh, so so right so that way people have understood that edges have a lot of uh, important information but those by themselves are not enough they have to kind of they have to be grouped together in a particular way they have to right they have to sort of uh, what do you call interact in a particular way in order to make higher inferences right that is what happens in a deep network initial layers may learn something which is kind of very very basic right. I mean you may not be able to say much except for the fact that except for the fact that you know there are these edges but uh, then how they come together it will happen in the, in the you know mid layers then then you get more complex features then then they sort of interact in a sort of a non-linear way to give even more complex features then eventually you get to the task right that you want to solve. Uh, then uh, geometry right so after after a low level vision so it is like a quick review of deep learning followed by low level vision which is like you know basic features filtering and so on. Then after that right we come to a geometry right which is which is what I sort of you know I sort of hinted at right in the last class which is like stereo or it could be structure from motion. So, you could have single view geometry or you could have you know two view geometry something like a stereo or you could have multiple multi view geometry right something like structure from motion or you could have photometric stereo where like I said last time you do not you do not move what what you do not move in photometric stereo you do not move the camera exactly right only the light source is changed right. Uh, you could either move the light source or you could have light sources you know fixed it somewhere and then you turn on one at a time right and then then you get different different shading information and uh, that is what is in fact exploited in order to you know get a depth map and uh, of course you know then this calls for a restricted kind of an environment right where you have to control all this when I mean, you cannot do it in direct sunlight and all so right? so different challenges for different problems. Then mid level vision is uh, is, is a little higher right where you start uh, you do not just talk about edges and so on I mean there is some there is some information there is some labeling right uh, that, that goes on right. So, you are able to tell for example the first one is about image segmentation right you are able to segment people versus you know aircraft or vehicle or something right or for example there is a retinal image right uh, that is I think it is called a fundus image right at the bottom and then you want to be able to I think those must be the veins or something right. So, you want to segment out the veins. Uh, again right depending upon whatever application one is actually looking at and then you can have optical flow. So, optical flow again is very interesting right I mean it is like saying that each pixel if it were to move independently of the others right and you want to know by how much it moved and which way it moved. It is like saying uh, what offset right would you apply to each pixel in order to be able to right get to the second image I mean, that is that is roughly what the optical flow is and uh, that is not the same as computing a homography like I said last time homography is a is a very is more straightforward optical flow is not so straightforward right but but these are all things that give you a lot of information okay about the scene and that's why we call the mid level vision uh, tracking i think last time itself i showed you a few examples then retrieval and again right we have to see okay as we go along we'll try to cover as much as we can or uncover as much as we can right that's a, i like to use the word uncover rather than rather than right, do do a, I mean a covering up so we'll try to uncover as much as we can right along the way and uh, we will see right I mean how, how it kind of pans out we may not be able to do everything that I am showing here but to, a, to the extent possible we will try to cover as much as we can. Then we come to high level vision so here you are talking about recognizing people object recognition people recognition or captioning right for example these are all high level tasks right I mean you are sort of giving a description of an image you can also extend it to the case of a, this one a video right does not have to be restricted to we can do video captioning. So, all these are like high level tasks right where uh, uh, where you know just as we humans would do right. So, somebody somebody gives me a picture like this right suppose suppose I see this see this picture then I will probably say right what is being said there uh, two children playing in the water 
So, something as close to that right you want to come to it does not mean that these are all solved ok. Let us uh, let us also understand that it is not like everything is solved ok. People are still attempting various various kinds of things here and uh, it is still these are all many of these are still open research problems. But face recognition to a certain extent is done in the sense that if you, if you are a cooperative subject it is kind of done. But if you are uncooperative then no then the whole thing is, is wide open and also if you are if it is a distant. Uh, distant identification that is also not solved. For example, if you say that I am flying a drone and then I want to identify who is on the road, you know that and all is not done ok. So, face recognition is good I mean if you are very close to the camera not too far away and you know you are giving a proper pose right or do not do not give too much of pose variations and all one can do one can do a decent job right. So, so that way this Viola Jones and all is actually a traditional method. Okay. And these days there are these you know deep network based based approaches and, and similarly right a natural language has what is called the bag of words representation and so on and uh, this is classification right. So, some of these we saw last time right I mean you can do classification where you simply say what is there in the image. Uh, you can also localize right put a bounding box around it so and so right then that becomes a higher sort of you know this one and then you can do a semantic segmentation where at a pixel level you say right whether this pixel to what class label should it actually belong to and so on right. No, not really that is what I am saying right I mean on a high level used to be done even even using using old methods. But these days a lot of it is actually driven by you know right uh, by deep networks. So, it is not like high level vision emerged after deep learning no. So, it is Vilo Johns was already there right bag of words was already there. So, all these representations were already there ok. But I think the way it has taken off right. So, those were still very very I mean there was kind of limited limited uh, playground. But now I mean you know people are doing fantastic things, but like I keep saying right one also has to look at you know how much of data has gone in right. I mean these are all these are all data hungry methods right. So, a lot of it is also the amount of data that say people have been uploading on the net right and then along with it the you see GPUs and all that help computation. I mean those all a bunch of factors coming together in order to enable these kind of things to happen and uh, uh, and the fact that right people started showing fantastic results right I mean that is why, but even today right what I find is. Uh, you know if you change a data set right there is there is still trouble I mean it is not like for example right you try to do I do not know how many of you have heard about the term super resolution. It is like saying that you know you have low quality pictures and then you want to you want to you want to build high quality pictures out of that. Now, you can do that right you can use a use a you know, deep network train it. Now, the training means that I mean you have to have nice pairs right you have to have pairs where you have a very high quality guy and then you have a corresponding low quality pair. This is the simplest case that you can think of. And you do not have to go far right. So, you can take this high resolution guy you can apply whatever transformations you want. So, typically you will down sample it right and again right what kind of model you use it is all learning that right. So, what might happen is if you try to try to create pairs like that and then you train a network you show this low resolution chap and then you say that that is the high resolution counterpart that you have to produce it will produce. So, you do this over a bunch of images right thousands of images, but tomorrow right if I give you give you give you a low resolution image. And if you can actually feed it to this particular deep network, what do you think will happen? It will actually, actually produce a high resolution image, but then what will it be bounded by? It will be bounded by exactly this law that you applied initially, right? So, what it will try to do is how will this image, how would it, how would the high resolution image have looked like whose down sample version is this? That is how that is all it can learn, right? Can nothing more because that is what you taught it. But you, but you know what? There are cases where, for example, your low resolution image could have artifacts in it. For example, I do not know how many of you have seen scanning electron microscopy images and all there you will have what are called you know charging effects. So, you will have suddenly you know suddenly a bright spot somewhere. So, if you have not shown that kind of thing that bright spot will still remain in the in the in the high resolution guy because all that it knows is there is a high resolution guy if you down sample this you should get this and if that if that spot is not in the high resolution you cannot see it in the low resolution. So, it will it will nicely reproduce it, but you do not want it. Whereas, in a in a typical scanning electron microscope if you did it at a high resolution you would not see that effect at all the charging effect would not be would not be there right. So, again so that is what I am saying right. So, it is not like everything is you uh, know everything is uh, everything is a hunky dory no right. So, you can have problems it is not like right everything is solved right there is still a lo long way to go ok despite all the hype around all of this right let us be let us kind of stand firmly to the ground right and understand that there are limitations. There are of course right good things that we have to learn, but at the same time let us not assume that oh deep learning everybody says deep learning and therefore uh, right without deep learning life is 0 there is nothing like that right and, uh, and there is more there is a lot to be done. So, that way it is good right otherwise we, uh, we will all be jobless right.